Hi, my name is Andrew John Mitchell, artistic director here at the Milburn Stone Theater. Today we're talking to the cast of Chicago, opening February 14th and running for two weekends. So I'm here today with Mr. Wyatt Neff, who's playing Amos Hart in our production of Chicago here at the Milburn Stone Theater. Wyatt, welcome. This is not your first time on the boards here at MST, is it? No, it's not, Andrew. I was actually, I was very lucky to participate in a production of Evita just last year and everything. I had a lot of fun and I'm very happy to be back. Excellent. So where have, where else might have Milburn Stone Theater audiences seen you perform? Um, I'm based locally in Delaware. I do a lot of work down in Middletown, Delaware at the Everett Theater. I'm a director, a teacher, and instructor down there. I also do things with Rehoboth Children's Summer Theater and Cumberland Theater all the way out in Maryland. I basically just do a lot of regional credits, but I love to devote my time to some of the local theater and the communities around it. Excellent. So, as I mentioned, you are playing Amos Hart mm. in Chicago. Yep. What's been your favorite part about playing Amos? Oh, Amos is just, he's such a truthful character, I guess. It's very, um, it's very poignant and, and it matters a lot to be able to share a character that's that real with an audience. And the audience that usually comes to MSD is always excellent as always. Excellent. Uh, do you feel that you're like Amos in any way? I, I, I feel a lot of connection with Amos. Amos is a character that really, um, that works hard on being blunt and truthful and realistic with the people that are around them. And sometimes because he's not willing to take the opportunities or the chances that are presented to him, he sometimes gets left by the wayside and sometimes ignored. But there's a certain moment in the show that he starts to get some of that power back and I think you'll really enjoy it. As a director, I'm always interested and kind of excited about how a actor prepares for a role. Do okay. you have any fun uh, techniques, tips or tricks you'd like to share with our audience? Oh, uh, well, I love just getting your head in the book and just keeping it there. That's one thing, routine, routine, routine is always gonna help out so much. But another thing that you can especially do for your vocal pieces is um, write it out in the form of a monologue and everything and you can really start working on the color the inflection and especially the motivation of your character through the piece. Candor and Ebb created these amazing songs for Chicago. <laughs> yep. Do you have a favorite song in the show? I think my favorite, actually, it doesn't have that much vocalization, but Hot Honey Rag, mm. it's, it's one of my absolute favorites. What's been the most challenging part in preparing for Amos and also the most rewarding? Um, I think the most challenging part is, especially in this business, in this industry, a lot of self-confidence is really paramount to getting yourself to be able to move forward and find new opportunities. And especially for this character is Amos, he doesn't have a lot of self-confidence. So I've had to find a different approach to try and understand what he's actually going through at this time. But I think one of the most rewarding pieces of it is seeing the strength and the conviction of which he tries to pursue these relationships, even if they might not always necessarily work out. Uh, here's a fun one. Uh, when we give you a five or, or a gracious 10 minute break, uh, do you have a fun activity you like to do with your time here at rehearsal? Well, but also? usually I'll probably run out to the car and give a quick call to my girlfriend because mm. I don't get to spend a lot of time with her. But I also, I love going over my tap steps, especially the telephone and Gene Kelly. You can always find a small little space to drop one in. There you go. Um, so in the show Chicago, Billy mm -hmm. Flynn tells us twice what Chicago is. What is Chicago to you? And also, what's Chicago to Amos? Chicago to me, 
I think uh, one of my fellow cast members said it the best. Um, I do think that is a story actually about opportunity and about the risks and the challenges that you kind of have to take and maybe the decision whether or not you want to move forward on it or not. But I also think Chicago to Amos is a dream, I think. And well, we're just going to have to wait for you to see if he gets out of it. There you go. Uh, one final question. It's the big seller. Why should audiences come see Chicago at Milburn Stone? Well, it's a great show. It's Candor Deb. It's Fosse. And this show is the pinnacle of that style. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then you find, never mind who plays what. Hit a cool line and you'll soon get high. Now I'm here with Katie Johnson. Katie, who's playing Velma in our production of Chicago. Hello, Katie. How's it going, Andrew? Not too bad. First off, congratulations at this being your first Milburn Stone Theater production. Thank you. Uh, where might have MST audiences seen you perform in the past? Uh, mostly schools I've gone to. Great. John Carroll, Washington College, kind of those circuits. So in Chicago, you're playing Velma. What's been your favorite part so far in playing Velma? I love, I would say the energy that Velma really brings to the stage. There's this kind of maturity and this confidence and also just this, this sex appeal that I think starts with herself and just radiates. So uh, she's just been a really fun character to play. Uh, do you feel that you're like Velma in any way? <laughs> well, actually, the reason I wanted this role is because I was always cast as like the Disney princess mm. voice and kind of the ingenue. So I really wanted something that was a bit more of a challenge and fed into a, dis a different type of female character. A little, so, uh, little different than Disney princess. Yeah, yeah. You can grow up a little bit from that. So, so um, as Velma, you get to do a lot of amazing Fosse-esque dancing that Katie Gordon has choreographed mm -hmm. for us. Do you have a favorite dance number in this show? It's got to be when Velma takes the stand. Mm -hmm. um, it started off with all that jazz, but working with Katie and choreographing Velma takes a stand, it's just, it's fun for me. It's interactive with the guys singing around and it just fits. As a director, I'm always interested in how a actor approaches a role. Do you have any fun techniques, tips, or tricks that you'd like to share with our audience that you use to help prepare? Yeah, so I shared this with um, Emily, who plays June in our cast. And one thing that I think is really helpful is you just having like one practice to yourself almost, and you're just going to the limit, pushing every extreme interpretation of your character. Just kind of get all the cobwebs out and then see what settles from it, so. So we talked about choreography. Mm -hmm. There's also some amazing songs that Kander and Eb wrote for this show as mm -hmm. well. Do you have a favorite song you get to sing? I'm always gonna love all that jazz. It's just the musical. <laughs> Absolutely. What has been the most challenging and then also alternatively the most rewarding part in playing Velma? The dancing, the dancing. for sure. <laughs> it's very active and I haven't done this in a while. There you go. Uh, so this is a fun one too. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have, uh, when, you, when we give you a five to ten minute break during rehearsal, do you have a uh, activity or a technique you like to do when you have that free time? So when I'm not here or working, I'm actually doing a lot to help uh, the State Theater and Havity Grace that we're just starting. Awesome. So it's a lot of work to get that up and open and I would be another part of the Harford Cecil kind of arts fabric. Yeah, so, great. Yeah. Okay, so in the show, Billy Flynn tells us what Chicago is twice. What is Chicago to you? And mm -hmm. also, uh, what do you think Chicago is to Velma? So I think what Chicago is to me is a chance to just get back to something that I loved and really stretch my wings and try things that are beyond my typical comfort zone. And I think to Velma, Chicago is just this playground that she just wants to master and dominate. And she's got a very clear cut way on how she can do that. And she doesn't let anything stop her. One final question. Okay. Why should audiences come see Chicago at the Mulvern Stone Theater? Because it's a fantastic production. It's the cast is so talented and just the music. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime experience to see the show. So excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know that jazz. Come on, baby. Love 
Now I'm here with Tara Vinson. Tara, who plays Roxy in our production of Chicago. Tara, this is your first Mulvern Stone Theater show as well. It is. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so where might have MST audiences seen you perform in the past? Gotcha. So I usually do performances out with um, Scottfield Theater Company and Rogue Swan and Have Be Grace. So I was just recently in Sister Act as Dolores Van Cartier. That was a great old time. And even with Rogue Swan in their vaudeville, The Last Call. Uh, definitely a great experience, but usually you catch me around that way. Never am I out this far unless it's for something really good and special, which I thought Chicago was going to be. Excellent. So, uh, so you're playing Roxy. What's been your favorite part in playing Roxy so far? I have to say my favorite part in playing Rocky, Roxy, <laughs> is trying to find her arc. Um, when I initially uh, even looked at Chicago, I was like, what is this girl? She's just angry, selfish, manipulative. She is all of these things. <laughs> but in understanding where she's coming from and how she's using what she has as a woman and just her ambition to get what she wants in life and not letting anyone stop her. So saying all that, do you feel that you're like Roxy in any way? <laughs> I do feel like I relate to Roxy some with her ambition. Um, like I admire her for it, Ex except to some extent. You know, she does get a little extreme, but um, I'm probably not too much of a Roxy. If anything, I, I feel a little bit more closer to home to Amos. <laughs> you so you do get to do a lot of fantastic Fosse-esque dancing in this production. Uh, do you have a favorite dance number in the show? I do have a favorite dance number. Um, it's not my dance number, <laughs> but um, I definitely would have to say Razzle Dazzle mm. is one of my favorites just because the entire company's in it and it's just so elaborate and you don't know where to look with this piece and it really I feel like that's one of the epitome or like those pinnacle points where the whole company is just together showing what Fosse and what Katie can do for this production. Excellent, yeah. Uh, so as a performer, do you have any fun little tips and tricks that you like to use, maybe techniques? help you prepare for a role like Roxy? Research. Research. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, my favorite thing, not my favorite thing, but the fun part is just going into the research behind a character, where it started. Uh, for instance, like Roxy and Velma, they were actually based off of real people. Um, and so I looked up the original play by Watkins and what is it? As well as the reports from the Chicago Tribune um, that were based on them and like just learning a bit about their lives and how they're very closely related as well to the musical and just the different adaptations. And all of that, it was all very similar, but just getting into those nitty gritty things, like even um, the song that Roxy listens to in act two while certain events happen. Don't <laughs> want to spoil anything. There you go. But um, it really gets you the mindset of who this person was and how you want to portray that person in their adaptation of the musical. Switching to music, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> do you have a favorite song in the show that you get to sing? Because that actually be even a song that you sing. It could just be a favorite song. I do. Okay, my favorite song is the first song, So Funny Honey. Um, I love uh, playing to that juxtaposition in Roxy's character of who she wants everyone to think she is and who she actually is, that um, internal person. And I, I just I just love that. Playing those two extremes just make me so happy. And I feel like that's one of the greatest parts uh, that you see for Roxy's character along with in the song nowadays from where she starts off and where she ends up. Mm. Uh, so talking about things that Roxy goes through, what to you so far has been the most challenging part of the show, but also maybe the most rewarding part in playing Roxy? Um, <clears throat> the most challenging part I would definitely say would be confidence, because um, Roxy is just ve very not me in a lot of aspects. And so I would definitely say like, um, I believe the song itself, Roxy, when you definitely see Roxy in her truest form and state as she becomes the, she's turning into the person that she wants and sees herself to be. And that was very hard for me. Um, just trying to wrap myself around this character, her dynamic, and how to just imbue that as well. And it's also been very fun because I've learned a whole lot about myself and in doing that. And I just love it. I, I, I love her for that, for her giving me that confidence. So in Chicago, Billy Flynn says it twice, what Chicago is. What does Chicago mean to you? Or what is Chicago to you? And also, what do you think Chicago is to Roxy? As like Chicago, I feel like, both for me and Roxy, I feel like it's opportunity. Hmm. Um, it can be hard out there, but you're making the most with what you got. And I definitely feel like Roxy took that 
Um, just so she took mm -hmm. that like a champ. Like even though she was slumming it for a while, she was like, I will not be this. I will make what Chicago is and turn it into what I want it to be and how it can assist and help me achieve what I want. And she did it very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally, uh, Big Sell. Why should audiences come see Chicago? Why wouldn't you want to see Chicago? <laughs> like, Chicago is probably one of those musicals that, if you don't know it, you're gonna you're gonna know it when it's done. Um, just the music, the choreography, the actors themselves. This is such a fantastic cast. Um, you're gonna walk away with a bounce in your step. Uh, it's like you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're not gonna forget it once you see it. It's memorable. They're very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs>